Ever wondered what it takes to make billions from the most forbidden ventures? Step into the intriguing world of extraordinary billionaires whose lives read like pages torn from a thrilling crime novel. Today, we pull back the curtain on Al Capone, a larger-than-life figure whose reign of terror transformed him into an iconic symbol of crime. But his story is just the beginning. Prepare to be enthralled by the dark allure of Criselda Blanco, the notorious Black Widow, and Frank Lucas, the real American gangster. Get ready to witness the untold stories behind these enigmatic figures who rewrote the rules of wealth and power. Born in Brooklyn, New York, Al Capone would rise to become one of the wealthiest and most powerful mobsters of the Prohibition era. His exploits knew no bounds as he dominated the streets of Chicago with an iron fist. Capone's empire stretched far and wide, from bootlegging and gambling to bribery and racketeering. Capone's ascent began in the early 1920s when he joined the infamous Five Points Gang in New York City. Under the membership of gang leader Johnny Torrio, Capone swiftly climbed the ranks, showcasing his knack for strategy and ruthlessness. Capone basically ruled over Chicago's criminal underworld. His notoriety reached its peak during the Prohibition era when he controlled a vast network of speakeasies, smuggling operations, and illegal breweries. This legendary gangster didn't just dabble in crime, he revolutionized it. He had his hands in numerous lucrative ventures, including gambling establishments, prostitution rings, and extortion schemes which brought in $100 million a year at its prime. Each of these enterprises contributed significantly to his already overflowing riches, further cementing his status as one of the wealthiest figures of his time. Capone was employing over 600 gangsters to protect his business from rival gangs, and by 1929, Capone's income from the various aspects of his business included $60 million from illegal alcohol, $25 million from gambling establishments, $10 million from vice, and another $10 million from various other rackets. Capone's money allowed him to bribe police officials, judges, and even the mayor of Chicago. Unfortunately, he could not bribe the IRS, who convicted him of tax evasion in 1932 and sentenced him to 11 years in prison. His empire would be worth about $1.3 billion based on inflation today. Escobar's story is one of unimaginable wealth and power. As the leader of the infamous Medellin cartel, he ruled over the international cocaine trade. Escobar's empire revolved around the production and distribution of cocaine. He capitalized on the rising demand for white powder in the 1970s and 80s, amassing unimaginable wealth along the way. His cocaine empire was estimated to have controlled as much as 80% of the global market, solidifying his position as one of the wealthiest individuals in the world. His empire grew to unimaginable heights, estimated to be worth billions of dollars. Forbes named Escobar one of the wealthiest men in the world seven years in a row. Escobar's influence extended beyond his personal wealth. His empire had a profound impact on the Colombian economy, his illicit operations generated so much cash that he struggled to find places to store it. Escobar was losing over $1 billion a year due to spoilage, theft, and damage to the stockpile of cash. At the height of his empire, Escobar's wealth was so immense that he spent $2,500 a month on rubber bands just to bundle up his cash. But Escobar's influence extended far beyond the drug trade. He used his vast wealth to infiltrate various sectors of Colombian society, bribing politicians, law enforcement officials, and even constructing hospitals, schools, and other infrastructure projects to gain public support. His philanthropic facade allowed him to maintain control and protect his illicit operations. Escobar's immense wealth allowed him to indulge in a life of extravagant luxury. He owned multiple lavish properties, including his famous Hacienda Napolis estate, complete with its private zoo, luxury vehicles, and even a personal airstrip for his fleet of airplanes. Escobar spared no expense when it came to living a luxurious lifestyle. However, Escobar's fortune and power came at a great cost. His control over the cocaine trade war led to a wave of violence and bloodshed, with countless lives lost in the crossfire. His ruthlessness in protecting his empire earned him a fearsome reputation, and law enforcement agencies across the globe were determined to bring him to justice. 
By 1987, Escobar controlled an estimated 40% of the Medellin drug cartel's business. In 1989, based on public records, Forbes valued his net worth at $3 billion. Clearly, this was a very conservative estimate, considering he offered to pay off the national debt of Colombia, which stood at $10 billion at the time. Griselda Blanco was a Colombian cocaine trafficker. In the 1970s and 80s, she was a central figure in the violent drug wars in Miami. And according to reports, she smuggled more than three tons of cocaine into the United States annually, netting $80 million per month. Also known as the Black Widow, Griselda Blanco was a drug lord for Pablo Escobar's Medellin cartel. She defied societal norms and shattered gender stereotypes in the male-dominated world of drug trafficking. Blanco's domination of the cocaine industry was unparalleled. She controlled a vast network of trafficking routes, connecting Colombia to the United States and Europe. Her innovative smuggling techniques, such as using children's toys and even corpses to transport drugs, showcased her resourcefulness and willingness to push boundaries. To further solidify her domination, Blanco employed ruthless tactics, including violence and intimidation. She spared no mercy when dealing with rivals or those who posed a threat to her empire. Such calculated displays of power ensured that her dominance remained unchallenged. She was worth over $2 billion at her peak. Frank Lucas, the infamous Harlem-based drug lord who inspired the hit movie American Gangster, had a unique business model. He would procure heroin directly from Opium King Khun Sa in Vietnam, hide them in coffins, and fly them from Vietnam to the United States. Frank was making $1 million a day at the peak of his business. Frank's enterprise centered around the lucrative drug trade, particularly heroin, which he turned into a thriving empire. Inspired by his mentor, the notorious Bumpy Johnson, Frank Lucas took the reins and carved out his own path in the world of crime. He had an uncanny ability to spot opportunities where others saw obstacles, and he used this to his advantage. He revolutionized the game by directly sourcing heroin from the Golden Triangle, an area spanning Vietnam, Laos, and Myanmar. By eliminating middlemen and controlling the entire supply chain, Frank had unparalleled control over the quality and distribution of his product. But his ingenuity didn't stop there. To smuggle his illicit goods into the United States, Frank Lucas exploited an unexpected hiding place, the coffins of fallen American soldiers returning from Vietnam. Concealing heroin inside the coffins was a risky but highly effective method that allowed him to transport large quantities undetected. Frank's daring tactics and attention to detail earned him a reputation as a mastermind. He meticulously planned each step of the operation, ensuring that his product reached its destination without raising suspicion. This innovative approach not only maximized profits, but also solidified his dominance in the drug trade. He was worth billions and had $52 million stashed away in the Cayman Islands. Semyon Mogilevich is a Ukrainian-born organized crime boss who has been described as one of the most dangerous and powerful criminals in the world. He was born on June 30, 1946 in Kiev, Ukraine, and later moved to Moscow. Mogilevich is known for his involvement in a wide range of criminal activities, including money laundering, fraud, arms trafficking, and extortion. He's been linked to organized crime groups in Russia, Ukraine, Israel, and the United States. Mogilevich was first arrested in the Soviet Union in 1974 for fraud and theft, but he was released due to a lack of evidence. He was later arrested in Hungary in 1995 on charges of tax evasion, but he was released on bail and fled the country before he could be prosecuted. Since then, Mogilevich has been on the run from law enforcement authorities, and he is believed to be hiding somewhere in Russia or Eastern Europe. He has been placed on the FBI's 10 Most Wanted list, and there is a $100,000 reward for information leading to his capture. Mogilevich is known to have extensive connections in the worlds of business, politics, and organized crime, and he is believed to have amassed a fortune of billions of dollars through his criminal activities. His wealth is believed to be largely hidden in offshore accounts and held through complex money laundering schemes. However, the U.S. Treasury Department estimated Mogilevich's net worth to be around $10 billion, making him one of the wealthiest and most powerful criminal bosses in the world. That's it for today's video. 
What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.